but within 20 years, he predicts police and rescue services will adopt his car. In 50 years, Mueller expects half of all Americans will be airborne. Whether or not Mueller succeeds, advances will continue in engine technology, materials, and computer chips. Many engineers believe you'll see some kind of affordable air vehicle in the next 20 years. You'll fly to a nearby airport, pop it into car mode, and drive home. A lot of people get concerned because they got this vision of all kinds of vehicles up in the air, but actually if you took all the cars on the road in America today and put them in the air, they'd still be miles apart. You'll see a computerized world where you're not flying it, you're just sitting, you're playing computer games, you're reading, uh, you're sleeping, doing whatever as you're delivered from point A to point B. In the future, flying ambulances will arrive ten times faster and on board, they'll have a secret weapon to cheat death. When you have a severe accident, brain cells can die within six minutes. The ambulance of tomorrow will not only reach you in time, it will carry a medical revolution that can save your life. Patient data registered, Alan Dega. Platinum class confirmed. Loss of blood, 35%. I suggest reversible death. Okay. After a severe accident or heart attack, every second brings us closer to death. So wouldn't it be great if one day we could somehow stop the clock? In the future, EMT crews could use a technique called reversible death or suspended animation. They will replace your blood with an ice-cold saline solution, dropping your body temperature to below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. At that point, brain and heart activity come to a halt. And that's not the only blood substitute that one day could save your life. Okay, tell me what happened. At Virginia Commonwealth University, Anesthesiologist Bruce Spies is testing a radical blood transfusion for trauma victims. Alcohol, drugs, any other problems that we know of? None that we know of. Okay, let's get them on the table. Blood carries the elixir of life, oxygen. Disrupting the blood supply stars the tissues and threatens the brain. About his past history? Tell me more. And how fast we get oxygen to the injured brain is key to the survival of the brain and the ultimate rehabilitation capability of the patients. Whether they can ever walk again, eat, drink, speak, all depends on that early delivery of oxygen. Brain cells can survive only six minutes without oxygen. This is an image of a brain trauma victim. The big hole is dead brain tissue, starved of oxygen. For years, Spies has been searching for the fastest way to restore oxygen to the brain. Red blood cells work too slowly. He's after an oxygen-carrying substitute that's faster. Finally, he has a likely candidate. A milky substance full of harmless oil-based particles called fluorocarbons. In brain trauma, we see that there's constriction of the blood vessels and actually stoppage of blood flow. In this example, you can see blood flowing through blood vessels and slowing. At some spots, it actually stops. The fluorocarbon blood substitutes fill in the spaces in between the red cells and can get to parts of the body where there simply is no blood flow. The key is their size. Fluorocarbons are one hundredth to one thousandth the size of red blood cells. Yet they carry up to three times as much oxygen. For trauma victims of the future, chilled artificial blood could lower core body temperature and create a safe state of suspended animation. 
by using fluorocarbons as a way to not only cool a patient, but to increase the oxygen delivered to those tissues, we could preserve brain tissue or heart tissue that would otherwise die. With your body stabilized, you can be loaded into an ambulance and flown to a hospital. The ER of the future will be completely different. Non-invasive body scans will allow physicians to search instantly for broken bones and internal injuries. Diagnosis? Suspended animation, no brain activity, abnormal cardiac function, heavy compound fractures, contusion of the spine, paraplegia likely. Not looking good. Okay, let's get started. Insert the sensors. Tiny electrical microstimulators are injected in your leg and attach themselves to your disabled muscles. The sensors will receive wireless signals that reconnect your muscles with your brain, allowing you to walk again. Today, most images of your organs are hours or even days old by the time your doctor sees them. But 50 years from now, physicians will see images in real time, even as they operate. At the Oregon Health University, Jonathan Lindner is developing a new way to see the body using an unlikely tool, bubbles. Often when we're doing ultrasound of the heart, we're not able to see the detail that we need to make a clinical decision. So what we do is we make ourselves some tiny bubbles. We agitate this liquid, we inject it into the patient's bloodstream, and the bubbles make their way to the heart. And we're able to see, with these microbubbles, detail that we were not able to see before. Traditional ultrasound shows only the outlines of the heart muscles. Microbubbles light up the entire heart wall and can reveal damaged tissue. The concept is simple. Microbubbles act like tiny bells. When hit by ultrasound waves, they vibrate and emit waves of their own, revealing more detail. During the high pressure peak, they contract. During the low pressure troughs, they expand. And because of that, they essentially ring in the ultrasound field and produce very strong ultrasound signals. Engineering the bubbles is a science unto itself. First, Lindner mixes one of the body's fats with saline and dye. Then, he injects a gas into the liquid, activates a vibrating metal tip, and the bubbles form. In these magnified capillaries, you can see the bubbles flowing. A hundred thousand of them would fit on the head of a pin. In the future, Microbubbles will do much more than produce better pictures. They'll act like guided missiles. Lindner is learning how to attach genes and drugs to the bubbles. And with his colleagues, he's experimenting with a powerful ultrasound beam to deliver drugs to diseased tissue. 